welcome to Organic Chemistry. My name is Dr. English. Today we're going to talk about some more organic functional groups. So we're going to look at amines, amino acids, and amides. Let's begin by talking about amines. And here is the image that is taken from reference table R of your region's reference tables. And amines are a derivative of the molecule ammonia, which we know ammonia is NH3. An amine is formed when one or more hydrogen atoms of ammonia is replaced by an alkyl group. And remember, an alkyl group is any type of branch. To name an amine, the E ending of an alkane name is changed to end in amine. Let's start off with ammonia. We know ammonia is N and then three hydrogens. So one, two, three, with a lone pair over the nitrogen. In order to draw methylamine, all we're going to do is take an ammonia molecule and replace one of the hydrogens with a methyl group. So we'll have our nitrogen in the center with its lone pair, and then a bond here with a hydrogen, a bond here with a hydrogen, and then we're going to put our methyl group. So a bond, C, H, 3. And I'm going to represent at that as a condensed structural formula just because it makes it easier. When I write the condensed structural formula for this particular molecule, I am actually going to start out by writing the C, H, 3 first, and then the N, H, 2. Let's look at another example. Dimethylamine. All right, so we're going to have our nitrogen in the middle with its lone pair, three bonds coming off of it. I'm going to put a hydrogen right here, and then it's dimethyl, so I'm going to have two methyl groups. So I'm going to write carbon with its three hydrogens, representing one of the methyl groups, and a carbon with its three hydrogens. When I do the condensed structural formula for this, I'm going to represent this as a parentheses C H3 and parentheses 2 saying hey look there's my two methyl groups and then N H and that would be the condensed structural formula for dimethylamine now let's talk about amino acids amino acids contain a carboxyl group otherwise known as a Ku group and an amine group which we know is NH2 really we know it's ammonia NH3 but we're removing one of those hydrogens because we're going to be sticking some type of alkyl group to that. The amine group is attached to the carbon atom that is adjacent to the acid group. The remainder of the molecule is represented by R, which indicates the side chain. And there's a number of different side chains, which makes each amino acid different from another one. Remember that amino acids are the building blocks of proteins. So what's our general format here? You're going to have a central carbon atom, and we know that the carbon atom has four bonds. Off of one of those carbon atoms, we're going to have our amine. So that's our nitrogen, our hydrogen, another hydrogen, and the nitrogen's lone pair. So that's the amine group. Off another carbon, we're going to have our carboxyl group. So C, double bond, O, OH. And then off my bottom one, I'm going to have a hydrogen, and then off that top bond, I'm going to put an R. And the R right here represents the side chain. And each amino acid has a general format. This amine group, which we see right here, this carboxyl group, which we see right here, and then this hydrogen at the bottom. But it's this R group that changes from amino acid to amino acid. So what does alanine look like, one type of amino acid? Well, again, we're going to start with our general format. We're going to start with a carbon, and then C double bond O, O, H, which is our acid, our bottom hydrogen, and then we're going to have our amine group over here, like this, and then here's my lone pair. And then off this top, which would be my R group, what's going to make this specifically alanine is that this is represented as CH3. So you might say, well, that's a methyl branch. Well, yes, but when a methyl branch is attached to this general format, you have the amino acid alanine. Now let's talk about amides. When one of the hydrogen atoms of the amino group reacts with the OH of an organic acid, 
a condensation reaction occurs. This reaction produces water and an amide, which is a compound formed by the combination of the two amino acids. Long chains of amino acid molecules held together by peptide bonds eventually builds proteins. So what happens in the formation of an amide? What you have is two amino acids. We have an amino acid over on the left and we have an amino acid over on the right. When these two amino acids come together, they're going to form a water molecule. And you might say, well, where is the water molecule coming from? The water molecule is coming from the OH of my acid and one of the hydrogens from my amine group. And as a result, when those two come together, we form a water molecule as one of the products. And as a result of those two amino groups coming together, we form an amide bond. Now you might say, well, where specifically is the amide bond? That amide bond is going to be between the C double bonded O right here and the N with the hydrogen. So this is the formation of an amide and more specifically known as a peptide bond. So what did you learn? We talked a little bit about amines, how amines are part of a molecule called an amino acid. And then we talked about the formation of amides. Need more help? Feel free to contact me. Have a great day.